Hello everyone and welcome to Eorzea Armoire, a series about the background of some of Heidelin's more epic and dense weapons, armor, and artifacts. We'll be investigating the lore of these items both within Final Fantasy XIV and the Final Fantasy franchise in general, as well as the amazing and sometimes obscure real-world people, events, and artifacts upon which they are based. It has been a long time since we talked about the Celtic hero Cuchulain and his legendary spear that could pierce even the rectum of Fadiad, the gay Bolg. And I'm delighted that we can finally return to the Ulster Cycle and Cuchulain's own father, Lu, venerated as a Celtic god of the sun and from whom we can see a great deal of inspiration for the Warrior of Light. Many accounts of Irish mythology are vague and contradictory, and most of what survives has been pulled through the filters of medieval Christian monks. But it is accepted to have been around 2000 years BC that the Tuatha de Danann first conquered Ireland under their first king Nuada, whom subsequently planted in its centre a great fiery spear, the glow of which could be seen from all corners of the isle. This spear was known as the Spear of Victory, or Brionac and it was soon coveted by the Fomor, the demonic underworld antitheses of the Tuatha de Danann, not unlike the titans of Greek myth, and their king Balor the One-Eyed. The Fomorians clawed and screeched at the shores of Ireland until Nuada's patience broke and he threw the spear into the host of Fomorians that it might destroy them. But it was caught by Balor, whom took the spear and cast its point into the centre of a lake in his underworld kingdom. It turned the black water into steam which birthed terrible demons of the air, and the spear immediately grew too hot for even Balor to handle. And so it was despaired as one of the great lost treasures of Ireland, and without it, Ireland itself was soon ruled and oppressed by the Fomor. Balor had a daughter named Enya, and he learned of a prophecy that Enya's son would be destined to kill him. So he had her locked away, but she nevertheless gave birth to triplets by a man of the De Danann named Kian, whom had infiltrated Balor's fortress trying to find a magic cow which the demon king had stolen from him, and he seduced Enya while he was at it. So Balor cast his newborn grandchildren into the sea, but one of them was rescued and raised by either the legendary smith Goibnu or the sea god Mananan, depending on the account. As he was taken by Mananan, the sea god bid the child Lu to say farewell to Ireland, which he did quite eloquently for a newborn, even going so far as to swear that he would one day return. Mananan took the boy to his land at the edge of the world and raised him among the lions and unicorns. When Lu grew into a young man, Mananan gifted him with a magical sword and armor that shone as bright as a new sun, and Lu determined to return to Ireland and drive out the Fomorians. When he arrived at the last fort and bastion of the cornered King Nuada, the watchman told him that there was room for none within that did not possess a much needed trade. So Lu asked the watchman if they had a carpenter, a smith, a musician, a poet and historian, a champion, a wizard, a chef, or a physician, to which the watchman replied that they indeed had among them at least one of each of these. So Lu told the watchman to go to the king and ask him if there was any single man within who had mastered all of these things, as Lu himself had. So Nuada in his fascination admitted entry to Lu. The court tested him at each of these crafts, and at each he proved to be in a league far beyond any man they had ever seen. And so they declared Lu Ildana, or Master of Every Craft and Champion of Nuada. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Lu's arrival so inspired the De Danann that the next day they went into battle against a host of Fomorians hopelessly outnumbered, and when Lu entered the fray, the enemy was utterly defeated and he left only nine alive to deliver a message back to Balor that the De Danans had reclaimed Ireland, that they would destroy every last one of Balor's servants, and that all would bow once again to Nuada as king. Lu soon learned that the three sons of Turan, a chief of the De Danann, had murdered Kian, the father of Lu, over a standing feud, but rather than having them put to death, Lu imposed on them an Eric fine of legendary artifacts that they would have to cross the world to collect, including the two lost Irish treasures, the Cauldron of the Dagda, and the Spear Brionach. With the assistance of Mananan's magical boat, the three sons ultimately completed their quest, and though it cost them their lives, they were redeemed in the eyes of Lu, 
with the Eric paid in full. So Liu came to possess the Spear of Victory, which has been said to have a conscious bloodlust of its own, a will to enter battle and hunt foes with or without a wielder, and that it had to remain chained and its tips submerged in a cauldron of magic water or poison between battles to keep it from igniting and destroying the world. Soon came the great battle between the Fomor and the Daedanan. The enemy host was carried by a wind of death and great swelling darkness, but Lu sat on a hill observing the battle and waited for Balor to personally take to the field. This is an account given of the end of the third day of battle. Balor heaved himself against the horizon, a mighty bulk, and the Fomor gave their strength to him and their fierceness so that no power remained in them. And because of that, Balor towered to the heavens, and his shadow darkened half the sky. Lu leapt to his feet. The Tuatha de Danan gave him their strength and their fierceness, so that he too towered to the heavens, and his brightness was more terrible than the brightness of the sun at noonday. Swift was the advance of Lu the Sunhawk. Swift was the advance of Balor the Hooded Vulture of Night. Lu shouted in a voice that echoed exultant to the stars. Balor shouted in a voice that shook the depths of the abyss. Lu gathered his strength and the strength of the Tuatha de Danan into the Spear of Victory which he held in his hand. Balor gathered his strength and the strength of the Fomor into his mighty death-dealing eye. He raised the baleful lid, but before the gleam that could destroy the world shot forth from it, Lu hurled the spear. It struck and entered the evil eye as fire enters a dark cavern. The strength of Lu and all the gods of light went with it. Balor trembled, the strength that was bound up in him loosened. His huge bulk wavered and became a shadow, and the shadow melted and became a shapeless gloom. Then Brigi, the Morigu, the battle queen that is called Dana, cried out to the hills and lakes and rivers and woods and valleys and plains of Ireland the news of victory. Some accounts have Lu piercing the eye of Balor with a slingshot, but I personally think that these are most likely the bastardizations of medieval scribes trying to make parallels with the biblical story of David and Goliath. In any case, the Fomorians were utterly defeated, but King Nuada fell in battle, and so Lu reluctantly took the high throne of Ireland and became accepted as the god of light and of the sun. It is supposed that the Brionach was the very same spear as one later found its way into the hands of various Irish heroes throughout the Ulster cycle known as the Luin, which is a name also taken by spears in Final Fantasy games such as Ten and Revenant Wings. I hardly think I need to stress any further the similarities in theme and imagery between Lu and our very own Warrior of Light, but if there was any doubt, I think the appearance of the Brionach really consolidates the kind of influence that these classical tales have on the design and the stories of Eorzea. It is certainly a grand and fitting weapon for a champion of Hydaelyn. But that's all the time we have for now, there are at least a few more among the esoteric weapons that I want to cover before we get into 3.1 and our new relics, so if you're enjoying this series please do like and subscribe, share with your friends and all that, I really appreciate the exposure, but until next time, thanks for watching.